in front of the camera today is the Omega Constellation 41 millimeter master chronometer. I have the offset sunray blue dial with the gloss blue ceramic bezel, the blue integrated strap. This is a very sharp model that I think, you know, skews more toward the dressy side, especially with the alligator inlays within the rubber strap. But it also could pull respectable duty as a casual piece. I think this is versatile and it doesn't have the versatile reputation that it could have if you dress this down with a full rubber strap or perhaps sourced the tank-like bracelet, the integrated bracelet from the smaller 39 millimeter version. I think that could also dress it down very nicely. So in essence, this is a model that has the capacity to sell more, to be more popular. It currently flies under the radar a little bit. It's glossed over for more prominent Seamaster and Speedmaster designs. And is that a good thing? Is it nice to find hidden gems that aren't posted on social media quite as often that you don't see on wrist at local watch collector meetups as often? Sometimes I gravitate toward the underrated, but at the same time, I struggle within myself because I want great models, great eclectic designs that have distinctive features great backstories and histories to get the love and attain the reputation that I feel that they, uh, you know, they really deserve. So let's talk about the Constellation. It first debuted back in 1952. That was the Pie Pan Constellation with the lovely linear design elements. It carried a bumper movement and it also had an etching on the case back of an observatory with stars above it that were really meant to uh, symbolize and celebrate Omega's six accuracy award wins that took place at an observatory prior to the debut of the uh, Pi Pan constellation. So in my opinion, Omega was very proud of the innovation and the progress of the company, and they debuted a very strong design. In fact, one could argue that was the best iteration of the constellation, and it has only devolved since. I don't know that I would necessarily agree with that because I really enjoy an integrated bracelet. I am a fan. I know not everybody is, but I am a fan of many watches that came out of the 80s. And the first Constellation with the uh, prominent bezel clamps debuted 30 years after the original in 1982. Now, these bezel clamps or bezel claws were not just decorative. They were to ensure the seal, the water resistance between the crystal in the crystal gasket without adding a lot of height and without adding a dominant bezel. And I think that was a smart move. It was innovative. The bezel clamps here in front of the camera today, they're decorative. They're not, you know, related to water resistance. And it's a shame this watch is a touch thick. And I think Omega would be well served to go back to those roots of trying to innovate and find ways to thin out their watches to make watches that feel more sophisticated on wrist. I don't think the height is a deal breaker myself, but it could be better. And I'd like to, I know, I'd like to see Omega work toward that. Let me know what you think in the comments of this video. Now, it was in 1995 that Omega placed the Roman numerals that were found on the dial into the bezel, and that solidified the constellation design into what we see today. And I look at this, and it really is interesting. There is linear elements and circular elements. Does it feel a little bit dated? Perhaps it does. And perhaps that's one of the reasons why collectors gravitate first toward the more prominent Seamaster, Speedmaster, Aquaterra, and Planet Ocean models. So I'm partial to the design. I think it has a lot of visual interest. I like uh, the case lines. I like the gloss ceramic. I do like the polished steel bezel clamps, and I love the dial details. I like the fact that these applied markers have a brushed linear finish on the top that narrow because of the angled polished sidewalls that reflect a lot of light. Those match this alpha style handset that also matches the polished applied logo. And also to a degree, the silver dimensional printing that carries the silver dust finish. I think that's most prominently displayed on the color match date down at the six o'clock position. Though my favorite feature of the dial would be the offset sunray finish that doesn't emanate from the hand stack and emanates from the five pointed star in between the hand stack and the uh, color match date at the six. So stepping back, let's take a look at how this wears on wrist 
For reference, my wrists are 7.25 inches. I like how large this is. I like the taper of the integrated strap, but again, it's a touch tall. It has a lot of light play and it definitely does not feel too big and it does not feel too dainty. I really like this 41 millimeter size. I think it is proportional on wrist. Within the watch is the 8900 coaxial Meta Certified Movement. This has 60 hours of power reserve, a free sprung balance, a silicon hairspring, arabesque machine finishing, and my favorite feature, the lovely jumping time zone hour hand. Uh, that is my favorite of the common or more practical complications. This will also be highly accurate, highly shock resistant, and highly anti-magnetic to a ridiculous threshold of over a million amperes per meter. So I step back and I take a look at this and I see a lot coming together. I like the blend of linear and circular. I like the fact that this skews more dressy, but certainly doesn't look out of place in a casual situation. I think, again, this would be dressed down on the tank-like bracelet or a full rubber strap with no alligator inlay. I think there is a lot going for this historic line that predates the Speedmaster. Uh, this does have some appeal, and perhaps part of that appeal for me is the fact that it is a little underrated and overlooked. And that might be the contrarian within my personality. I like finding the gems that aren't posted as much on social media or seen as often on wrist and watch collector meetups. So uh, let me know what you think about that. I'd like to end with a request to Omega. In a few years, we will hit the 75th anniversary of the release of the original Pi Pan Constellation. And I think the time is just perfect to release a re-edition, uh, not in the original size. I'd like to personally see it upscaled, but I want that Pi Pan dial. I want those gorgeous, prominent lugs. I want a bracelet. I'd like to see a quick adjust clasp in that bracelet. I'd like to see a thinner meta certified movement with the time zone jumping hour feature, a, uh, an observatory featured somewhere on the watch to pay homage to the inception of the constellation. I think that would hit all of the right nostalgic notes and I would be very interested in that, both in full precious metal and in stainless steel. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching today. And thanks to Exquisite Timepieces for lending in this constellation for review. I buy my Omega models from this family owned brick and mortar AD. So I recommend them to you if you are searching for any Omega model. A link will be in the description. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like and a subscription if you haven't done so already. I am working on more varied horological content right now. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.